here in the UK, we have these book fairs called Scholastic Book Fairs, where you go into the hall and there's like stands of books everywhere. And going to one of these was like going to a candy shop for nerds. It was also a way to find out which one of your friends were rich, because let's be honest, those one pound book vouchers weren't helping us poor kids. Hi, it's Divya G. Welcome to my channel. What does the G stand for? The G stands for genius. At least that's what my parents thought that was gonna become because I've read so many damn books as a child. I read an article that said that Jacqueline Wilson was a weirdo. Well, it said that she was problematic, which I'll get into later on. But it made me want to do an evaluative ranking of the childhood novels that I read based on how much they traumatized me into the human that I am today. But before that, this video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Now, what is Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning platform that has thousands of different classes for creative people and those who just want to learn. You can either explore new skills or deepen the ones that you already have. As an Asian who's felt pressure to abandon their creative side in order to pursue more traditionally academic roots, honestly, the classes that Skillshare offers is my genuine fantasy. For my audience out here who are writers, if you want to get into creative writing, graphic design, or even photography, they have industry professionals showing you the ropes. Jessica Corbesi has her own classes and I'm quite excited for that. And also inclusive UX designing websites for everyone by Regine Gilbert. It's a learning platform where you can explore your creative side in your own time and if you think this is something for you then the first 1000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can judge for yourself. There's no adverts, they put new classes out all the time and it works out just to be under $10 a month if you take the annual subscription or £7 in the UK and explore your own creativity. Boop. I've taken the liberty to make this children's books tier list maker. From least to most dramatic, the bottom one being made me a good human being. The next level up is decent, didn't really trigger me, bit weird. The next one up is Shay's Broken. And the one right at the top is basically you need therapy. Dork Diaries, the female version of Diary of a Wimpy Kid and the better version. Decent. Beautiful Creatures is one of those books that I read just because the cover looked like Twilight. I'm gonna put it as a bit weird. And that is the only thing good about this book. The Worst Witch, really good book, but made me want to be a witch and fly around on broomsticks and I couldn't. So for that reason, I'm giving it decent. We all know these iconic anemic hands and it's Twilight. Nothing is as iconic or paved the way like Twilight did. Twilight carved the path for vampire movies, for love triangles, for the entire YA genre and it simultaneously set the standards for YA as well. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to your decision. But I'm gonna put Twilight as made me a good human being because Twilight taught me what love really is. Ship Down. I didn't read this book but I did watch it as a child. I was six years old and all I remember was seeing bunnies trapped in barbed wire necks bleeding throat cut open what does a californian say when it pushes lentils down a hill Roll the, the witches because nothing says feminism like women hating children wanting to turn them into rats to be honest kids are rats anyway so before I Die is about a girl who is about to die and she wants to do things before she dies and one of them includes sex and I was reading this when I was like six years old and I honestly felt like I stumbled upon erotic fiction or something and you know that's when the Wattpad smart started. I'm gonna put it on She's Broken. How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff. The only thing I remember about this book was lying about it in my first ever video review. Hello everybody, today I'm gonna be doing a week review. I did quite like this book, I think it was very interesting. And also a bit of incest. Bit weird. Rich dad, poor dad. This is not a children's book, but my dad did insist on me reading this when I was 11 years old quite persistently. My dad has always been obsessed with me, a first generation immigrant becoming a billionaire businesswoman, but to his disappointment, the only B I am is a baddie with social anxiety. I'm gonna put this in uni therapy because it reminds me of the daughter that I could have been, should have been. So the next one is called like the disgusting earwax monkey flea bag picking the nose cartoon. Every male to some degree just looks like this. Children's books were incredibly gendered back then and this was just full of earwax and bogeys. Disgusting shit. You know what, it is decent. Jacqueline Wilson candy floss. Jacqueline Wilson gave me friends when I had none. If you've never had the privilege of reading a Jacqueline Wilson book in your life, then you suck. But also this is a summary of how every single plot to every single Jacqueline Wilson book ever goes. Child abuse, yeah. Child abuse, yeah. Candy Floss is also about trauma. 
she was poor as well and I was like <laughs> I'm really late. But the one thing this book did do for me is it introduced me into the fine British delicacy of the national dish which is a chip butty which is every 40 year old yoga mom's nightmare. Double, Double carbs? carbs? I'm gonna put candy floss as decent next we have the 11 plus verbal reasoning in the uk you take these exams called the 11 plus which is an indicator of how smart you are at age 10 to further segregate you into high performing or low performing schools because nothing says equality i'm gonna just put this as traumatic after the 11 plus that's when everything started going downhill that's when i stopped having any fun that's when the creativity seeps out of my ears Private Peaceful by Michael Mapago. Classic. Nothing says Britain like being obsessed with World War II. I'm gonna put this as made me a good human being. Harry Potter and the first one. I didn't read Harry Potter until I was like 15. Now, this is a tough one. Harry Potter, really cool, except it has a lot of fat phobia, a bit of racism as well. And the author, yikes. Oh, I'm gonna have to put Harry Potter. Oh, where's it gonna? I'm gonna put decent. Also in crosses by Mallory Blackman. Now, as far as I'm concerned and my school, if you didn't read this book, you're a racist. North Saint Crosses is basically the reverse world to where we live now, where white people are at the bottom of the hierarchy and black people are at the top. Are you African American? I don't. I don't understand. The question. It's made me a good human being because it's one of those things where children read to learn about racism and stuff as if they can't already see it in the playground. Billionaire Boy taught us from a young age that capitalism and the wealthy class breeds greed. Mm, put it as made me a good human being. Roll lentils. Matilda! The amount of underwear that I have ruined and soiled straining so hard just to see if I could be Matilda and move the gloss with my mind is unprecedented. Miss Honey was an LGBTQ plus icon. She was the gold standard. She walked so that everyone else could run. I'm gonna put Matilda as decent because if it wasn't from the underwear. Cookie. As the title suggests, it's about a girl who struggles a bit with her weight and I was, when I read this, I slapped that ish up. I was like, girl, me too. I too just put ketchup on my chocolate. Put ketchup on my rice. Now I'm gonna put Cookie up here just because I have, I don't have a reason. Diary of Anne Frank. based on a true story, isn't it? Horrible history. <laughs> Terrible true This is why my parents thought I was gonna become a genius because I just read so many horrible histories, horrible science, horrible everything, but unfortunately, no. So I'm gonna put this as here because, you know, rip. Next up, we have these fairy books. There was like a hundred of them. It was like capitalism gone wild. I am convinced that Peter Pan 2003 and Jeremy Sumter made these fairy books popular we're all buying fairy books off the bookshelf just to keep tinkerbell and all the other fairies alive i do believe in fairies i do i do that was my religious chant i chanted that more than i prayed to god i'm gonna put bit weird this is the cover wuthering heights by emily bronte this was after i read twilight and i was just in a vampire mood wuthering heights end up not being about vampires just for that reason i'm gonna put it as She's broken because this put me off classics for life, truly. Don't read a classic thinking you're gonna get Twilight. My man's hungry, the hungry caterpillar, yeah? This is a book about a caterpillar who wakes up and immediately goes into a downward spiral of what could be considered an eating disorder. Like the title suggests, Caterpillar Capitalism. This book is about capitalism. Because a lot of the food that this caterpillar consumes is not natural, it's artificial. And a capitalist society rests on the belief that you need these products to become a better version of yourself. And that's why the hungry caterpillar is eating and munching away. It's honestly a dangerous ideology for kids and I don't think kids should be reading this. So for that reason, I'm gonna put this as broken. And last but not least, my sister Jody. This is a book about two sisters. One's called Jody, the other one I don't remember. Spoiler alert, this is the most traumatizing book that I've ever, ever read in my entire life. It introduced me to the concept of death. Jody is at the top of a school tower. She falls out of the building and there's a little Gomorrah all the way down. And 
I've never cried so much in my entire life over a Jackie Wilson book and that's why I think Jackie Wilson is evil. So I don't know why I didn't add this but there's another one called Love Letters. There's a 14 year old girl called Prudence. Rude. She's 14, she moves into a new school and her dad is abusive. Child abuse, yeah. And she has daddy issues, so she latches on to the next male figure that she knows, her teacher, Rax. Who's a grown ass teacher and instead of thinking, maybe I'm gonna catch a case. And Prudence, the 14 year old, goes to her grown ass teacher and says, hey, I love you. And he says, you're gonna be the girl that makes my teaching worthwhile. And she kisses him and he pulls away, but then he kisses her back. And guess what happens next? Does he go to jail? Like he should? No. Prudent, the 14 year old, gets expelled and he gets to keep his job. An actual child predator, a groomer, a pedo man gets to keep his job and the girl gets expelled. If that doesn't teach you slut shaming, victim blaming, then I don't know what will. It's like Jacqueline Wilson, just because you had a boy girl as the top result on your BDSM test doesn't mean that you need to write a children's book about it. So yeah, those are my rankings about all the childhood books that traumatized me deeply as a child and I encourage you guys to let me know what childhood books you read that now you grow up and you're like, eh? What was your favorite author? What was your favorite book? I want to know. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys, I don't know when. All right, stay safe. Peace out. Yeah, okay. Boop. So this is a book about a capital. Capital. This is a book about a caterpillar. Caterpillar. This is a book about a capitaler. What? This is a book about a capit- What is it? A caterpillar. Child abuse, yeah.